If you've been following our UXpreneur show up until this point, then you'll know that we've been struggling to find a way to prototype real user-generated audio in the existing mainstream prototyping software like Figma, Envision, or even Protopod. In today's video, I want to show you just how easy it is to prototype real user-generated audio recording in Bubble.io. So grab that popcorn. Let's dive in. Okay, so a lot of you might be wondering, how do I get started from scratch? So what I'll do is start from scratch with you. I'm gonna create you. I'm gonna create an app and I'm gonna name this Hum Drum Demo. And I'm gonna say that I'm just building a software as a service. It is external, customer facing. We are testing out a business idea. So I'm gonna create the app and now here we are. When you look at your pages, you have index, a 404, and a reset password page, and that's it, right? So we're on the index page right now. What we wanna do is we wanna get over our icon for the recording button, and we're gonna say circle, and there we are. There's our recording button. The next thing that we're gonna wanna do is get the repeating group, and we're gonna drag that over. And here's our repeating group, right? Now I really only need just like two rows in there, all right? We're also gonna need a extra icon for saving and uploading the file to the database over here. We're also gonna need a input field, so I'll grab that input field, I'll set that here, and we can just you know put placeholder text in here like file name for now. So when we click that, we're gonna upload our item here. The next thing that we're gonna need to do is let's go to plugins and we're gonna add a plugin. I'm gonna type in audio because we need an audio recorder. And I'm gonna use this bubble audio recorder and install it. It installs right away, so I can just click done now. And here we have it, it's installed. So now I can go back over to our design area and come down to inputs and we can grab the audio recorder element and just drag it there. By default, it's black. So you can leave it at that if, you, if you'd like um, or not. I personally like to change it to white just so that it's visually a little more pleasing. But for now, I'm, I'm fine with this. The next step we wanna do is in the data. What we're gonna have to do here is create a new type called audio recordings. And this audio recordings is going to be publicly visible, but also that's gonna be the, like, the name of the table that we're gonna pull from the data. So we're gonna create a new field. We're gonna call it file, and it's gonna be a file. And we're gonna create that. And we can also do a file name, and it's a file, and we're gonna create that. So this way our file has a name. So now that we've done that here, the next thing we can do is go over to design and we're gonna select our repeating group. I'm gonna double click it to get this pop up. And right now the type of content is gonna be audio recordings that we just named back here. Okay, so that's how we know where to come from. And then data source, when we click here, we're going to do a search for audio recordings and we're gonna add a new constraint. We're gonna get audio recordings created by the current user. Now we have this sourcing the data from our table. The next step is we're gonna actually add some text here and here as well. So let me show you that. We're gonna to come to our text element here and I'm just gonna drag it over here. We're gonna come in here and we're actually going to insert dynamic data. We're gonna get the current cells audio recordings and we're gonna get the file name. And so now they each have that. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get an icon and we're gonna put it right there inside there so it shows up for the next one. And we're gonna get a play button. The next thing we're gonna do is add the recording function to our button. And what I'm gonna do is come here and change the color to red for recording. I'm going to come over here to condition and say when the audio recorder is recording, we're gonna change this icon from a recording one to a stop. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come back and we're gonna start edit workflow. That took us over to the workflow tab. And here, when that is clicked, we're gonna go down to element actions and we're gonna to go to start and stop the audio recorder. 
We're going to go back to the design tab. We're going to go over to this input field. We're going to go to the initial content section. We're going to insert dynamic data and we're going to go get the repeating group audio recordings, list of audio recordings, count plus one. And that's going to increment the file names as we go about it. Next, we're going to click our save disk and we're going to start edit its workflow. So we get this section here and we are going to go to element actions, upload content. We're going to go here and we're going to go to data things because we're actually going to add this to this new thing to the database. The type is going to be audio recordings and we're going to set another field called file and this is going to equal the result of step one. So it gets that content and uploads it. Then we're going to set another field. This time it's going to be file name and that's going to be equal to the input file value. So whatever value we set that name to be. And then we're going to go here and we're going to go to element actions and now we're going to clear content of audio recorder A so we can start fresh each time we record. Now we're going to go back to the design tab and we're going to select this play button. Here we're going to start edit its workflow. So we get another one here and this time we're going to go to element actions. Instead of just doing play and stop, which doesn't give us control over the value of the current cell, we're going to go to plugins. Okay, so we're going to go to plugins. We've already added the audio recorder. We're going to add another plugin called toolbox. We're going to install it. Click done. Okay, now we have it and we're going to go back to the workflow for play. Here we're going to go down to plugins and we're going to click run JavaScript. And in here we're going to need a variable called audio and it's going to equal new audio with the URL to mp3. And now I'm going to take this URL to mp3 and I'm going to insert dynamic data and I'm going to get the current cells audio recordings. I'm going to get the files URL. So that points to the URL in the database. All right. So when we play, we get that and it does it. So now we're going to go back to the design tab. Let's give this a test. Let's go preview it. You can see we have the microphone. It wants to let us use it. We're going to say allow. Testing, testing. One, two, three. Three. Here it is. We're going to save it. Now it shows up here. And now we've just added our first audio to the Humdrum database. If we go back over here to the database and to File Manager, you can see that audio wave is now there. Oh, and make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on the next video where we continue building Humdrum in Bubble.io. See you there. Bye bye.